afternoon, everybody. I am uh, Dr. Rula Abu'awad Siam. I'm a dermatologist practicing in Ramallah, Palestine. I would like to thank the CPPF for this kind invitation to give you a lecture today and would like to thank them for organizing uh, this conference. Today I will be presenting uh, about common skin diseases that we see in the primary healthcare. When we talk about dermatological diseases, we discuss diseases that affect the skin, the mucous membrane, the hair, and the nails. As you all know, the skin is the largest organ and has numeral, numerous potential abnormalities which could reach up to 1,500 with many variants. 15% of the consultation in the general practice, they relate to a skin problem, and between 50 to 75% of individuals, they may have a skin problem at one time. When we want to classify the um, dermatological diseases, actually it is difficult, but one accepted form is the summarized of, is that of the British Association Dermatologist uh, Index Code in 1999, where you can see the classification from A to Z, and um, uh, we will discuss uh, briefly some of these diseases. I will be starting with the infectious diseases of the skin, mainly the bacterial infection, since 20% of our outpatient dermatology visits are for bacterial skin infection. Staphylococci and streptococci, they cause the majority of bacterial skin infection, but recently there is the concern of the community-associated methicillin resistant staph aureus. You know, there are various systemic diseases and immunodeficiency states that predispose to bacterial skin infection, which make them severe and refractory to treatment. A common infection is impetigo, uh, which is contagious, and uh, it has uh, form, the bullous form and the non-bullous form. Uh, st uh, Staphylococcus aureus is responsible for the bullous and the non-bullous form, where group A beta hemolytic streptococcus it represents, it represents another important cause of non-bullous impetigo. In the picture, in, the, in these pictures, you can see a superficial erosion with a typical honey-colored crust on a chin of a, of a young child. Um, uh, in 5% of the cases that are caused by streptococcal genes, it may be uh, followed by acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. The other picture shows a, a form, uh, the bullous form, where you can see a superficial bulla and dry erosion due to bullous impetigo. When it comes to treatment in healthy patients uh, with a few superficial lesions and no systemic symptoms, you can give a topical and uh, antibiotic therapy, uh, such as mupercine, fusidic acid, uh, associated with cleansing the affected area and removing the crust. When to refer or when to give oral or intravenous therapy, it depends on the extent of skin involvement, the presence of complications, comorbid conditions, or local drug resistance, and of course, the patient's immune status. Other bacterial infections, such as uh, bacterial folliculitis, which is the superficial or deep uh, infection of the hair follicle. You all know abscess. Abscesses are a collection of pus that are rolled off from the surrounding tissues. It can occur anywhere on the body, whereas a furuncle, it involves a hair follicle. A contagious collection of furuncles is termed a carbuncle. In the picture here, you can see a furuncle with, with a fluctuate erythematous nodule and a central posture. Um, the treatment is usually by warm compressors, incision, and the drainage. Sometimes we have to give systemic antibiotic therapy, and it is recommended in furuncles that are around the nose or in the external auditory canal. Severe or extensive disease associated with signs, symptoms of systemic illness, and patients with concerning comorbidities or immunosuppression. Another bacterial infection that we see is cellulitis. Mostly it is seen in the emergency room. Um, cellulitis is infection of the deep dermis and subcutaneous tissue. It is characterized by areas of erythema, swelling, warmth, and tenderness. Sometimes it may be severe, um, associated with uh, pustules or necrotic tissue. In immunocompetent adults, it is most often caused by group A streptococci or staph aureus. You know, there are risk factors for uh, developing cellulitis, such as lymphedema, um, intravenous drug abuse, diabetes, or alcoholism. In children, we more often see it in the head and the neck, and in adults, in the extremities. Here's a picture of bullous cellulitis with extensive soft tissue infection of the lower extremity due to group A streptococcal infection. Cellulitis is a clinical diagnosis, usually the white blood uh, white blood cell count is not usually high or slightly, sorry, it's normal or slightly elevated. 
blood cultures in immunocompetent host are almost always negative and it's important to keep when diagnosing cellulitis it is always important to keep in the back of our head um, the differential diagnosis of a lower limb uh, cellulitis deep venous thrombosis stasis dermatitis superficial thrombophlebitis and paniculitis the treatment you give a 10-day course of oral antibiotic that covers group a streptococci or staph aureus after cefalexine or clindamycin when to hospitalize and when to give intravenous uh, drugs in serious, seriously ill patients with facial involvement or failure to respond to oral therapy. The treatment should be associated with immobilization and elevation of the effects of extremity. And one point to be mentioned here is that NSAIDs, they may mask the signs and the symptoms of deeper necrotizing infections and should be avoided when treating cellulitis. Okay. Um, there is no um, dermatologist that uh, that will not see fungal infections. Fungal infections are very common, and uh, mainly we see superficial mycosis of the skin. A, a simple classification of superficial mycosis of the skin is if in the presence of uh, inflammation or if there is uh, no inflammation. An example is the petriasis uh, versicolor, which is characterized by multiple oval, round patches or thin plates that are covered with fine scale. It, um, it is usually distributed on the seborrheic regions and which could be hypopigmented, whitish tan or brown hyperpigmented. Um, it's almost always asymptomatic with an, and the major concern is its appearance. Here you can see different pictures of uh, a petriasis versicolor extending up to the face in um, hyperpigmented form and the hyperpigmented form where you can see thin plates um, that are covered with fine scales. The treatment of petriasis versicolor is usually topical antimycotic uh, uh, therapy with the antifungal shampoo such as ketoconazole 1 or 2 percent or the selenium sulfide shampoo. This should be applied twice weekly and um, leave it for 10 to 15 minutes and then rinse it. Um, in severe extensive cases, we can give um, and systemic antifungal therapy. But uh, uh, petriasis versicolor is associated with a, a, a high rate of uh, recurrence. That's why it's important to, um, to give the patient an antifungal shampoo that should be used once weekly as a body cleanser to lower the recurrence rate. <clears throat> um, another fungal infection, tenio corporis. Tenio corporis is the dermatophyte infection of the skin that affects the trunk and the extremities, excluding the hair, nail, tongue, soles, and the groin. Each has its own name. It is most common in the tropical region, most common by tracheophytes and rubrum. It's the most common pathogen, um, uh, where you can see um, annular lesions that are scaly. Sometimes you see pustules in the active border of the of the of the lesions, and they are associated. The, the symptoms are usually pruritus and burning. Tinea uh, um, is the is the name given to tinea that are that appears in the interferenous areas more more often seen in men, since the scrotum um, uh, provides a, a moist and uh, moist uh, environment for fungal growth and it is seen in obese person with excessive perspiration and it is also associated with pruritus and burning. Here are pictures of tinea corporis where you can see the annular lesions with the central, clear, central clearing and you can see the central clearing, the scales and the pustules in the active border. Another form is the tinea fasciae and from its name it affects the face, same lesions but on the face. The treatment is usually to give topical antifungal for the uncomplicated localized form. And in, in extensive form, you can um, give systemic antifungal therapy. An example is Terbinafine 250 mg once daily for a week, or Itraconazole 200 mg once daily for also a week. There is no pediatrician that does not see tinea capitis. It is very common in children. Uh, we see it a lot in our clinic. Uh, it, um, it, is, it affects male more than female. Uh, it appears as areas of, uh, uh, of a scaly erythematous uh, eruption with a broken up hair. You can easily remove the hair. You know, the uh, the lesion the, the lesion is, 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 is diagnosed clinically by the broken up hair and um, if not treated, it may progress to scarring and permanent alopecia. There's another picture of tinea uh, capitis associated with tinea fascia and tinea corporis in this uh, child. 
<clears throat> as I mentioned, it is diagnosed clinically. Sometimes it requires wood light, wood light or KOH and culture. The, the important thing about tinea capitis, it has to be treated systematically. Systematically, um, we usually give brusiofulvin. It is it is safe and the dose is easy. It is 10 to 20 milligram per kilogram, and it's given with fatty meals. It may reach up to four months of treatment. Okay, um, uh, we can talk about, uh, we can discuss viral diseases and um, uh, we can mention the herpes simplex virus. There is the herpes simplex virus one and two. One is usually associated with the oral labial and two is associated with the genital herpes infection. In children less than 10 years of age, most herpetic infections are caused by HSV1. HSV1 is spread primarily through direct contact with contaminated saliva. Two is spread primarily by sexual contact. But the transmission of the virus, it can occur during asymptomatic periods of viral shedding. Usually there is a primary infection followed by the recurrent lesion. The primary infection is usually severe, um, uh, affecting the, the mouth and the lips, where you can see painful group vesicles and uh, um, they are appearing on an erythematous space. Um, they may progress to pustules or ulceration with the classic um, uh, scalloped border. The lesion, the, the, the disease may last two to six weeks, and the mouth and the lips are the most common sites. Um, recurrent lesions usually appear most often on the vermilion border of the lip. Um, when treating herpes simplex, you can give uh, um, aciclovir. For example, for the, aerolab for the aer orolabial herpes in the recurrent, you can give aciclovir topically, or in severe cases, aciclovir uh, 400 milligrams three times daily for five days. And genital herpes, you have to give aciclovir systematically. Um, some some uh, patients, they have uh, recurrent lesions up to six times a year or even 12 times a year. It means a, a, lesion, a, a recurrent lesion every month. In these patients, we can give them um, aciclovir, for example, 400 milligrams twice daily, which causes chronic suppression. Um, varicella zoster virus. Varicella zoster virus, as you all know, is the etiologic agent of uh, chicken pox and shingles or herpes zoster. Herpes zoster it represents the reactivation of latent VZV infection. It affects 20% of healthy adults and 50% of the immunocompromised. Now, this reactivation of the virus, it could be spontaneous or induced, induced by stress, fever, radiation therapy, immunosuppression. In the picture here, you can see the um, the, the dermatomes of the of the body. You all know that uh, herpes zoster it usually starts with a prodrome of intense pain that may mimic a myocardial infarction along a skin dermatome, and then it is followed by the appearance of grouped vesicles on an erythematous uh, base. In most cases. Here are the different stages of herpes zoster, where you can see the mild vesiculation with the resumative base. Here are the group vesicles, and here in later stage with the posture formation, and also in later stages, the dusky purple color is the old, uh, older lesion. An example of herpes zoster is the herpes zoster of Salmicus, where you can see a, a clear demarcation, sharp midline demarcation associated with the uh, um, uh, contralateral uh, periorbital edema. One uh, symptom of the herpes zoster is the intense pain associated with it. So um, we have to start treatment as early as possible, up to 72 hours. But starting up to seven days, it also it, it is also beneficial. Available antiviral therapy, aciclovir, famcyclovir, or valcyclovir. Um, both, uh, the, the three of them they result in the decreased severity and duration of both the skin lesion and the pain. An immunocompromised patient, we usually give intravenous aciclovir. Um, when it comes to herpes zoster, the dose of aciclovir is 800 milligrams five times daily for seven days. But when giving aciclovir, we have to check in adult um, uh, interactions with other medications that they are taking and the kidney function before treatment and during treatment. Okay, so we're going to move to another subject. We will finish with the, with the infections. We can talk about the dermatitis, the eczema, and the most common is atopic dermatitis. I see it, we see it in our clinic, and pediatricians see it in their clinic. 
It is a chronic relapsing skin disease. It has been increasing um, uh, recently. The prevalence is increasing, and it is most common in uh, early infancy and childhood, but it could persist up in adulthood. It is characterized by the presence of acute, subacute, and chronic eczema. In the acute form, you can see rhizomatous papules with the serous exudate. And uh, in the subacute form, you can see the exocorrelated papules on the erythematous face. And in the chronic stage, where the, um, it's the, uh, the persistence for a long time of the, of the eczema, there is accentuation of the skin markings, as you can see, which is termed lichenification. How to diagnose it? There, are, there is major criteria and minor criteria for the diagnosis. Major criteria, the presence of pruritus, the presence of a chronic or relapsing dermatitis, and the presence of dermatitis that is affecting the flexural surfaces in adults, the, and the face and extensors in infants, and the presence of personal or family history of cutaneous or respiratory acne. There's a, a long list of minor criteria that happens in patients with uh, atopic dermatitis, an example is elevated IgE, the recurrent in skin infection, susceptibility to cutaneous infection, um, uh, triggers, it may be triggered by food, and early age of onset, etc. Okay, how to manage atopic dermatitis? You have to eliminate the trigger, you have to put it to, uh, per, um, uh, um, you have to, have to the barrier disruption repair, repair the barrier, and you give anti-inflammatory medications in acute exacerbation. You have to avoid irritants such as soap, wool, chemicals, wool and chemicals, and keep the patient cool. And in um, infants, children that are not responding to uh, optimized treatment, um, you have to consider food allergy. Um, uh, you know that uh, atopic dermatitis, there is erosis of the skin, so it is important to perform cutaneous hydration with thick emollients. It should be performed every day, many times during the day, if the patient has to have short baths with bath oils. And um, to, to be noted is that uh, a more expensive barrier creams, they have not been shown to be uh, um, more effective. Um, in acute exacerbation, you have to give topical anti-inflammatory therapy, such as topical corticosteroids, topical corticosteroids, um, in the face and in the areas, areas, we have to use a low potency, such as hydrocortisone. Topical calcium urinary inhibitors, the sacralimus, uh, um, the protopic that is available, the elider, um, it, they can be used for maintenance, and they can be used where you cannot uh, use um, to, to, uh, topical corticosteroids for a long time. Another important treatment in atopic dermatitis is the phototherapy, and uh, fortunately in Ramallah, in Palestine, we do have the narrowband UVB, and it has been used in the treatment of atopic dermatitis. It decreases the severity and may give a period of remission. In severe cases, sometimes it requires hospitalization for wet soaps and phototherapy, and sometimes you can even give cyclosporine for the treatment of severe cases of atopic dermatitis. Another example of the eczema is the allergic contact dermatitis. Allergic contact dermatitis it appears at the most often on the site of contact with allergen. An eczematous reaction at the site of contact with allergen. But it could also have a patchy distribution. Um, uh, most commonly in the, in, the, in the world are due to poison ivy and nickel. In Palestine, we don't have a lot of uh, poison ivy. We see it a lot for, for nickel. And to diagnose it, patch, we, we perform patch testing. Here are different examples of the allergic contact dermatitis here in a, in a baby with, after the use of neomycin ointment, where you can see the erythematous plague with the situation. Um, this is an example of the poison ivy, and it's characteristic for the erythematous streaks and the linear vesicle. Um, recently, with the COVID-19 and everything, people are using uh, more gloves and using more um, uh, hand hygiene. These um, irritants has caused um, uh, chronic allergic contact dermatitis leading to hand dermatitis. Here's a picture of a shoe dermatitis when the lady wore a new sneaker. Here's a picture of one of my patients where she applied the cream only in these areas, and you can see the reaction it has caused. Patients here, mostly they do not seek medical attention because they know they use this, so they had a reaction, they will stop using it. 
Um, but sometimes, you know, um, they have an eyelid dermatitis or a hand dermatitis, and they don't know if that a, something um, personal care product is uh, is causing uh, their problem. In these cases, the best thing to perform is patch test. Okay, um, uh, psoriasis. Psoriasis is also a common disease. It affects about 3% of the population, and it affects 3% of the population here also in, in Palestine. Um, the hallmark of the disease is the presence of erythema, thickening, and scale. The lesions of psoriasis, they vary in size, they, they vary in shape, they have, but they are sharply demarcated and mostly symmetrically distributed. As you can see, these are the most common areas where, uh, um, uh, where the, the psoriatic plaques can appear. There are many patterns in psoriasis. The most common is the plaque type psoriasis, which affects about 60 to 70 percent uh, in um, the most common type in childhood as well as in adults. The most common site and the first site to be affected usually is the scalp, followed by the posterior auricular region and elbows and the knees. Here you can see the, um, the, the erythema on, with the thick scale. Um, another form is the good faith psoriasis, which more, is, is more common in children and usually um, uh, following a streptococcal pharyngitis. It is characterized by a uh, popular drop like small lesions that are symmetrically scattered all over the body. Um, it may result spontaneously, but in 40% of the cases, unfortunately, it may progress to plague type. Here are pictures of good taste psoriasis. You can see that they are good taste, it means that they are uh, uh, small, like uh, small drops, of, um, uh, raindrops. And uh, they, are also, they are also covered with the thick scales. Okay, another severe form of uh, psoriasis is the erythroderma, which requires hospitalization. In the erythroderma, um, there is the erythema and scaling all over the body. Um, the patient has uh, other, other systemic uh, manifestations such as fever and may have electrolyte imbalance. Um, as I mentioned, it requires hospitalization. Um, it may be erythroderma, may be too many dermatological diseases, but when it comes to psoriasis, it's most often due to withdrawal of systemic corticosteroids. Another form is the palmo planter. It is more common in women and in smokers, affecting the palms and the soles. There's the form of the fustular psoriasis. The fustular psoriasis appear, uh, it may be localized or generalized, where there are pustules in the um, uh, psoriatic plaques, or it appears um, sudden onset of fustular psoriasis without any history of psoriasis. Psoriasis is a systemic disease. It can affect also the nail. There are many forms of nail uh, affection. The most common uh, is the pitting. Sometimes when it is difficult to diagnose psoriasis, there is no family history, or um, the, um, uh, you have to examine the nails, and you can see signs of psoriasis in the nails, which give you the 100% the diagnosis. It also affects the joints in about 30%, and the affection of the joints, it may be disabling. Here's a picture of one of, uh, of a patient that I was called to in the, uh, in the hospital. Uh, she had a severe uh, generalized pustular psoriasis, as you can see where there were lakes of pus all over her uh, body. Um, she had she was known to have psoriasis and she was given corticosteroids and uh, withdrawn suddenly and she had uh, generalized uh, postular psoriasis fortunately she was treated and she is doing um, much better right now okay now for treating psoriasis the um, we explained to the patient that this is a chronic disease. There is no cure, but each person, each patient ha is individualized, is, um, has his own treatment plan. Um, we combine treatment, we, uh, we explain to the patient about, uh, about the disease, about our concerns, about the side effects of the treatment. In simple cases, and with one or two plagues, you can give topical treatments uh, such as vitamin D3 analogs, topical corticosteroids, uh, coal tar, and the association um, adding coal tar with phototherapy is an excellent technique that we call Chikorman 
protocol and uh, it is performed also in Ramallah and it, it leads to very good results with, with very uh, low um, minimal side effects. Um, we have an advantage here in Palestine is that we have the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is an excellent place for treating psoriasis um, and uh, in, um, in, it is an excellent place treating psoriasis for the sun exposure. In a failure of topical treatment and extensive involvement or the presence of arthritis, we give systemic treatments, systemic treatments such as mesotrexate, cyclosporine, retinoids, and the biologic therapies. The biologic therapies that are available in Palestine are the Humira, the Embrin, and the Cosentex. Okay. Um, we also, I wanted also to discuss vitiligo, vitiligo because I see it. Uh, it is an acquired disorder, it has genetic and non genetic factors, it is characterized by depigmented macules and patches and results from progressive loss of functional melanocytes. Um, it affects up to 2% of the general population. It can appear at any age. Here you can say that you can see the totally amelanistic, so milk or white, uh, chalk white macules or patches associated with graying of the hair, which is permanent, unfortunately. And uh, the lesions, they, uh, they enlarge. Um, the, the, the distribution of, of vitiligo, it may be a focal or it may be universal, affecting the whole body. The treatment, there is no cure for vitiligo and this has to be explained to the patient. But there are, uh, there are uh, different treatments with satisfactory results. And uh, you have to wait at least two, three months to determine whether a particular treatment is effective. The um, uh, treating vitiligo we usually start with topical superpotent corticosteroid and topical calcium urine inhibitor. In severe cases, we can perform depigmentation of the skin. Okay, the most common skin disease that you see in a dermatology clinic is acne vulgaris. Acne vulgaris it affects about 85% of uh, uh, adolescents uh, between 12 and 24 years of age, and it, uh, it continues to be from problematic well into um, adulthood. It is characterized clinically by comedons, papules, pustules, cysts, and scarring. There are different pictures of uh, there are different pictures of uh, acne where you can see the uh, comedons. Here is the a severe form of acne where there are the cysts, the scars, the, um, the open comedons, the blackheads. The patient uh, receiving isotretinoin for severe cystic acne, three months of treatment. There's um, uh, inflamed papules and pustules. Um, acne affects the, the face, the, the back, the chest, the shoulders, and there's a picture of uh, severe acne on the uh, on the back of the patient, on the face of the patient. When you uh, when you want to manage an acne patient, you have to log in. You have to take a detailed history, detailed history about the age, the sex, the hobbies, what does he use, what does which medication he took, uh, in in females, the menstrual history, and you have to perform a a, a thorough physical exam, the skin type, the color, the distribution, the type of the acne, the type of the, le the lesion morphology, the presence of scarring, etc. And we have common therapies for acne, whether they are topical or systemic. Uh, topical therapies, they are um, uh, such as enzyme peroxide, uh, antibiotics, clindamycin, erythromycin, retinoids, topical retinoids, or systemic therapy with antibiotics, there's a long list, and isotretinoids. And finally, I will be discussing alopecia areata. Alopecia areata is a non scarring form of hair loss, which is characterized by areas of bald hair, scalp hair. It is an autoimmune disease. Sometimes it could be a uh, total hair, uh, scalp hair loss, alopecia totalis. Sometimes it's the, the entire body with uh, alopecia universalis. Here are pictures of uh, alopecia. You can see these are the exclamation point, end point, which, mean, which means the disease is still active. And as you, you all know him, so he has alopecia universalis, but he is famous. He lives, he has a, a very successful life. So it is only a matter of cosmetic appearance. Sometimes it may be associated with other diseases such as atopy or autoimmune thyroid disease. And when treating it, you uh, treating it according to the severity of the cases, mild cases, you can use topical intralesional corticosteroid. Sometimes you can give systemic corticosteroid in rapidly progressive and if, if it is um, uh, totalis. Thank you, and I will be happy to answer any questions if you have. And here are my uh, contact information if you need to contact me. Thank you.